Hey everyone, your girl Paris here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is that you might be tuning into this video, either live or with the recording. It feels edgy for me to show up live in your news feed. And I've been really riding the, the edge of my growth lately and stepping outside of my comfort more frequently into the uncomfortable places where I feel radical growth exists and where I feel we're all being kind of nudged to uh, step into that place, space a little bit more. So here I am and I'm really excited to talk about a topic that is really near, um, near and dear to my heart. It totally is intriguing and captivating to me. And that is how it is that our posture impacts our mood and our attitude towards ourselves and towards the people around us and towards life. So it's really fascinating because our posture has changed dramatically uh, in the last 20 years. And, you know, in this 21st century and our relationship to technology and our relationship to comfort, it is really common to take on this posture of slouching. And you probably don't need me to spell out what slouching means, but quick example is um, folding the shoulders inward, collapsing through the front of the body. Typically it involves uh, hyperextending the knees and pushing the pelvis forward. Hello to everyone who's watching, this is exciting. Um, so in this posture of slouching, then um, there's a lot of different hormones that are released that communicate fear to the body. And this is just the way that we're naturally wired, our DNA is, because whenever it is that we, typically when we feel afraid or when we are in fear, then we will contract into this posture of protection. And when we are contracted in this posture of protection <clears throat> and we are closed through the front of the body, and we are releasing specific hormones to, um, you know, by our nervous system to communicate that we are in some sort of danger and that there's a threat out there. And so this is a posture that is so freaking important to our evolution and to who it is that we are today is being able to contract and to cut off the world in a way and to go inward and to protect ourselves. And it's really interesting because this posture of slouching kind of emulates that of fear if we're hunched over and um, then we are communicating to our bodies that we are in fear and that we are in sadness and in grief and in uh, depression. And this is so important to know when it is that we are feeling these things and to go into this posture because it is, it's very soothing to a part of our nervous system. However, part of our healing journey um, will, we can honor that and then know when it is that we need to begin to expand it and lift ourselves out of this posture that is physiologically communicating to our bodies depression, sadness, uh, lack of self-esteem. This is a posture that we will typically take on when it is that we feel out of control in our lives. And so knowing when to do that, when if we're experiencing grief, sadness, all of the above, and I especially think it's really potent now in um, the status of the world right now where there is so much uncertainty and unknown and anxiety and fear and it's so fine to go inward and to hug ourselves and to feel the protection part of our nervous system want to want to protect ourselves but however we need to know when to step out of it and offer our bodies a different position 
so that we can actually then be impacted physiologically and bio with biochemistry, like our biochemistry, we can be impacted by the different uh, hormones that are released when we expand our posture. So we go from this kind of con contracting posture to an expansive posture. And this is not a moral, like there's no morality here of like one posture is better than the other. They're both really, really, really vital. And I think that that's what's um, important to recognize is that they're both vital to our survival. We just want to be aware of what it is that we are doing and do it consciously, participate consciously, not be run by our default patterns. And so I invite you as you're watching me right now, hello, hello, <laughs> uh, I, I invite you to check in with how it is that you're holding your body and just with no like, oh, I'm lazy or whatever kind of judgment we want to attach to it, just be aware and observe. And then from that place of observation, oh, does this fit where my emotional, my emotions are right now? Um, or is this what I want to continue to cultivate right now? If I have been feeling sad and depressed, am I ready to um, step into maybe a posture that will offer me more insight and perspective on life. So just really wanna emphasize that there is no uh, better than, it's just observing and then consciously participating. So our posture is giving us feedback all of the time. It's giving the body feedback. And when we are more expanded and we open the belly, and we will literally have more control over our executive function in our brain so we're thinking more clearly we feel more confident about ourselves so we have higher self-esteem we feel more capable we feel more empowered we feel more motivated about taking action when we are in a posture that supports um, the body opening so Oh, what else do I want to say? Um, so I want to invite you into a posture that is more expansive. And so if you're feeling the call, then um, I invite all this, I'll walk you through a two minute meditation or so. And um, this is really just to support us opening our minds, opening our perspective, um, opening our creativity and the solutions energy because we are more connected to solutions and resolutions when we are in a posture that is uh, most natural to the body. And actually this expansive posture, it is it invites our nervous system to step into a parasympathetic nervous system response, which is relaxation. And when we're more relaxed, we're way more open to life and we only heal in the relaxation response. We're not physiologically wired to heal when we're feeling stressed and we are uh, communicating to our mind and our body when we are in this posture of duress and when we're contracted that we are in a stressed, sympathetic, uh, response in the nervous system literally like cortisol increases and um, testosterone decreases there's again there's a lot of studies that are coming out about this and I didn't want to have to like wait until all of the science comes out about what hormones specifically and where and at, you know all, all of the languaging around that though I find that really really fascinating my teacher Mark David says um, I don't need science to catch up with what it is that I already know intuitively and so science will absolutely catch up because this is being studied quite extensively so I want to invite you into a posture of expansion let's find a seat somewhere maybe on a chair or maybe sitting cross-legged on a pillow so you're propping um, your hips up and can invite your eyes to close or you can keep them open and please place your hands at the base of your ribs so that lives near the narrowing of your waist and welcome in a deep breath 
in through your nose and out through your nose. And with your inhalation, allow your breath to become so deep that you press the base of your ribs wide into your hands. And as the base of the ribs push wide into your hands, your hands can gently push back into the base of the ribs, just creating a little bit of a feedback loop, allowing you to ascertain if oxygen, fresh air, is actually reaching the corners of the deep lungs that allow the ribs to push wide. And like you had gills of a fish They're expanding outward, widening outward. And take three more breaths here. Slow, deep inhalations, slow, deep exhalations, focused on the base of the ribs, pushing wide, expanding. And then release the hands from your ribs and go ahead and wrap your arms around your shoulders. And draw your shoulders forward for a moment so the back of the heart really expands here and it's like you're giving yourself a big old juicy hug. You can draw your chin in towards your chest for a moment to really gulp in this essence of, of you. Maybe embrace yourself like you would like to be embraced by somebody else. And just receive yourself here. And as we draw our energy inward, the back of the heart fills and the primary thoracic curve of the spine, it rounds. And as this, as the back of the heart continues to fill, the base of the ribs continue to widen. Take three more breaths here. bottom of your third, go ahead and release yourself from the sweet embrace and relax your hands by your side and allow yourself to smile open through the collarbones and now there's an energy that lives in the ribs that pushes the ribs high, it lifts the ribs and the base of the ribs continue to push wide and the back of the heart continues to, to broaden and then while keeping all of those actions embodied, now the whole rib cage begins to lift away from the hips. It's almost like the waistband is growing out of the hips and a little lift to the chin. And take three breaths here, just welcoming yourself into a more expansive posture that isn't as tightly wound in contraction. It's like we're peeking out of our own shell here and seeing the wonderment, the wild nature of the world around us, within us. And here in this posture of expansion, we literally begin to see more expansively. We're open to more possibilities. And so thank you so much for playing with me and participating if you did that meditation. Um, one thing that really attracted me to the bow spring five years ago when I began practicing it was um, how it is that I felt after each class. And I, the alignment, the first five classes irritated the shit out of me because it was so different from what it is that I had been taught in my yoga class, uh, in my yoga practice. Um, and I was teaching yoga at, for seven years at that point. So the first five classes of the bow spring really irritated my nervous system, y'all. It triggered the fuck out of me. And so I knew when I was bumping up against that trigger that something really potent and powerful was there for me. And 
that I'm, you know, I was wise enough to note. And even though I felt this agitation because the alignment system was so different, I couldn't help deny that when I left class after these first five classes, I noted how fantastic I felt, how lifted my attitude was, how easier it felt to engage in life in a hopeful way. It felt like I was un uncovering all of this optimism that lived in my heart and in my ribs. And so I'm really excited to offer, so this, this obviously it's just a really fascinating topic to me. And I feel like we can uh, grow together in really phenomenal ways inside of our posture and, and, and in finding and feeling the embrace that it um, offers us. And so I am teaching some Bowspring beginning classes that will support you in practicing this posture of power, support you in feeling it and practicing it maybe when even it is that we feel scared but we communicate to our nervous system by staying lifted and expanded like, wait a minute, I know that there's more possibilities to this situation than I'm giving myself by just curling in. And again, please know that there's nothing wrong with curling in. Actually, it's really, really important to know when we hold ourselves and to contract into the a fetal position. So um, I'm teaching a uh, uh, for three months, for the next three months, I'm teaching Bowspring Beginners. And it's Monday and Wednesdays, uh, 10.30 to 11.30 Mountain Standard Time, to support everyone and myself at cultivating a posture of trust, of cultivating hope, and nurturing ourselves at a really, really, really deep level. So I hope that you'll join us. I'm, too, I'm taking drop-ins, which is super edgy for me because I've really held my beginning classes in a very strong container of, uh, of you know, needing to um, sign up for a specific amount of classes. But I'm just trying to do things different because I really think that um, we're all being asked to do things different. And so anyway, I... Hope that this little postural meditation from bud to blossom, that's my teacher Desi Springer's little saying, uh, bud to blossom, which I love so much. I, I hope that it supported and supported you in some way and was able to ripple into your world meaningfully. And um, if you want any more information about my class, please let me know. And I'm just sending so much love to you all on this day. And I'm also feeling your love so we can I'll continue to support each other in that way. All right, so much love everyone. Thanks for watching, aloha.